Hello Booktube, I'm Jonathan and welcome to Words in Time. Now in today's video, we're going to be answering the question, should you read the Hyperion Cantos? Because when it comes to the most recommended sci-fi books, you have books like Dune, Ender's Game, Foundation, and I think you'll find Hyperion in that category as well. But I see a lot of questions about this series online, particularly about the sequels, and I think it does help to know just a little bit about what to expect. So I'm going to be answering some of those questions as well as letting you know what type of readers I think this might appeal to and when you should pick it up depending on what you are in the mood for. So when it comes to the structure of this series, it is a four book series, but it can be read as two duologies. You have Hyperion and the Fall of Hyperion forming the first story arc and Endymion and the Rise of Endymion forms the second. Now, in terms of the commitment to get into the series, some people think Hyperion can be read as a standalone. Personally, I think that's a little bit crazy. I felt like I needed to read The Fall of Hyperion as well. Now, when it comes to the second duology, Endymion and the Rise of Endymion, I think it helps to view it as a separate, although somewhat connected story. It does flesh out some ideas from Hyperion, but it also retcons a few things as well. So. It answers some questions, but raises some more too. In terms of how best to enjoy the series, I think it helps to read the duologies together. You can either read all four books in the series together, or you can read the first duology, take a bit of a break, and then jump back into the second duology when you're ready to experience the Hyperion universe again. In terms of style, each of the books are unique, and I enjoy them for quite different reasons. Now, when it comes to Hyperion, the first book in the series, it is quite famous for its structure, as it is a space opera told in the format of the Canterbury Tales. We have four pilgrims that are all traveling to the time tunes on Hi the planet of Hyperion that are guarded by the Shrike, and each of these characters tells their backstory along the way. Now, if you happen to enjoy short stories, you might like how each character's tale is told in a different genre. Whether it's military sci-fi, cyberpunk noir, horror, or philosophical sci-fi. Now, because each of these styles are so different, you might end up enjoying, enjoying some more than others, but it is fun to see how everybody ranks the different stories. Personally, I wanted a bit more plot progression in the present timeline, but when it comes to world building and character work, it doesn't get much better than Hyperion. Moving on to the fall of Hyperion, the structure is completely different, which is why I think some people that love the Canterbury Tales style format in Hyperion were perhaps a little disappointed in the sequel. Now, I want to tell you exactly what it is, but the book does introduce a new structure as well as a new character in the first hundred pages. And it did take me to a little bit to get used to them, but once this book gets going, it became one of my favorite science fiction books of all time. It combines epic world building with hard sci-fi technology and concepts with really deep philosophical themes. I promise you I am not exaggerating when I say this book changed me as a person. So if you like the first duology, I highly recommend continuing. But if you liked Hyperion but didn't enjoy The Fall of Hyperion as much, then you may or may not also like the Endymion duology because I will tell you that stylistically, the series does start to move away from what Hyperion was. So what do we get in Endymion? Well, in this book, we follow a new group of characters that are being chased across the universe, the outcome of which will determine the fate of humanity. Now, this book is told in the first person, and I think this structure is much more straightforward than what we get in the first two books. I also think that Endymion features probably the most action and the fastest plot progression of any of the books in the series, and it also contains probably my favorite fight scene of all time. Now, individually, I think the characters are perhaps not quite as interesting as the characters in Hyperion, but I did really enjoy the buddy dynamic between the main core group of characters, and I think Father Captain DeSoya is a rather intriguing antagonist, and we also have the always enigmatic Shrike. And lastly, we have The Rise of Endymion, which is a little different stylistically. Now, don't let the thickness of the book fool you. This is actually much longer than any of the other books in the series. The paper used in this mass market paperback is 
rather thin. It is over 700 pages long. And for me, this was definitely the slowest book in the series. It is definitely much more philosophical. Now, at the time while reading this, it wasn't quite the explosive conclusion with all of the answers and reveals that I was hoping for, but I think upon a reread, I would really appreciate the thoughtful exploration of empathy even more a second time around. While it might not be the most exciting in the series in terms of the plot, I do think it hits some emotional high points. So who do I recommend this series to? Well, number one, if you already enjoy sci-fi and you know you're a fan of the space opera genre, then I cannot recommend this series highly enough. The genre of sci-fi is known for its concepts and themes, and those are definitely prominently featured in the Hyperion Cantos. But what I think this sets this series apart is its prose and characters. Dan Simmons' descriptions are just so vivid that I feel like I really know these characters and I can imagine this world. If there is one sci-fi universe that I think about more than any other, it would definitely be Hyperion. Number two, if you enjoy other genres such as fantasy, horror, romance, or detective stories, then I think there are going to be elements about Hyperion that you might enjoy, and this could be a good way for you to get into sci-fi. Now, there is a fair amount of terminology and the prose can be a little bit dense, but I wouldn't let that put you off. I would say if YA was at a 1 or a 2, and infamously difficult writers like Joyce or Pynchon were at a 9 or a 10, I'd put Hyperion around a 6 or a 7. And number 3, if you're new to sci-fi and terms like Farcaster portals, time dilation, and the Technocore sound a little bit overwhelming, then don't let me put you off from reading the series. I'm not a fan of gatekeeping. If you want to read it, then read it. But if you're still not sure and you want to gauge whether you are interested in reading the genre of sci-fi, I might recommend checking out a series like Red Rising or The Expanse. Then if you know if you enjoy it, jump right into Hyperion. If you're looking for some other recommendations, I also have a video, my top 10 sci-fi books for beginners that you might enjoy, so check it out. So to wrap things up, this is one of my favorite series of all time. If I had to rank the books, and I'm not sure this is a very common order, but my favorites would be number one, The Fall of Hyperion, number two, Endymion, number three, Hyperion, and number four, The Rise of Endymion but I will say that I very much enjoyed each of them. Let me know your thoughts on the series if you have read it, and if not, let me know whether you're interested in picking it up. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe, and you can find more sci-fi content over here.